on their own website, they speak out very clearly about having 400,000 to a million uh, medical users here in Canada. And uh, it's very disturbing. And, and this isn't stuff we see reported in the news. It's very, it's very unfortunate. And, uh, and this is where, again, the moral dilemma comes in, because I'd like to support. Yes, sir. Yeah, or ma'am. Um, yeah, Sorry. My name's Cal Mandu, and I've been trying to get a cannabis card for like three months now. I've had, I've come down with all the conditions that are, I've, uh, I've come down with a sheet of conditions of what's going on with my body. So I'm basically from, for 13 months arthritic from head to toe. I've suffered multiple beatings out there. I've got all the documented data. Where do I find a doctor so I can get a card? That seems to be the biggest mystery for me. I can get it otherwise, but I don't want to have to go down to the wheel wall. I don't want to always have to go to our place and meet up with someone and have a friendly little chat and have a talk. I want to do it above board. I want to get a, a Canadian medical card as well as the cannabis card because I was hassled nonstop by the cops, not just the cops. Where do I get a dog? And that, and that is like the, the, that's the driving force question right now. We have 140,000 doctors south of the border where America says there's a war on drugs who say we need reclassification of cannabis so that they can give one of these to their patients. But here in Canada we have 60,000 doctors in the Canadian Medical Association who got a letter in 2004 from their insurers called the Canadian Medical Protective Association. Now those insurers said don't sign those federal forms, you can get sued. There's nothing in the pharmacology books that addresses cannabis. So this spooked all the doctors. Since that time, they've, they've come out with a waiver. And I actually brought that with me today. Just bear with me for a second here. This is, a, this is the medical waiver that the CMPA came out with to answer your question. This would be what I would suggest you arm yourself with, ma'am. Um, I hate to bug you again, but I brought that with all the, the forms that I needed for the doctor to fill out to get on board. And all he said to me at Kool-Aid was we give, we actually give a prescription to someone that's losing weight on a major uh, level. And I've lost a lot of weight being on the street, but that's still no excuse. I use it for arthritic pain. I went armed with that form, and that's the only, only uh, statement he had to say was, if you're losing weight rapidly, we'll look at it then. Okay, and this is again, uh, okay, and this is the ongoing issue with Health Canada. This is why I, I remain an activist and an advocate. Um, people may wonder if I have a card like this, which is a federal license to grow my 49 plants and to have my medicine, why would I still put myself at risk? It's because I've had HIV AIDS for 15 years and I've taken a lot of risks over my life. But the one thing I want to do now is make sure that I share some of the information that I've come to find out that's true, like being lied to for 100 years. It's not the greatest feeling. And you begin to see things a little clearer as you come closer to the end. And uh, this moral dilemma as an activist is, is standing before you now, seeing that many is maybe qualified for a federal license. But just as this lady said, you got doctors that are impeding your access. Um, impeding access to me is a constitutional infringement. You, you've already won the right. Recently in Ontario, there was a court case called the Carousel case, where a bunch of people came together and said, we want the right to, uh, to grow together. The, the ratio of one to one. I mean, the government made it so that if I wanted someone who is healthy to grow my marijuana for me, that oh, they could only grow for one medical patient. You know, and to that, you know, that was struck down as unconstitutional over four years ago. You know, it was already dealt with. But no, government has to go and change it back based on some 1961 treaty that Canada is obligated to, which doesn't, it's not applicable to medicinal use of cannabis. So again, this is where the, the gateway theory, now this has been challenged in the VIX constitutional trial. I was a defense witness in this trial. Um, the VIX constitutional trial is, uh, is basically got all the regulations uh, being called into question. And, uh, and, the, and these, uh, these regulations ha are, are full of things such as, my partner and I both have these licenses. Um, if you can imagine being in a room with big plants and then uh, having, <laughs> having to be, uh, follow regulations that say you're not allowed to touch each other's plants. Even furthermore, I'm my caregiver to my wife, okay? So um, when I want to be able to be her caregiver, um, that would imply that I would take care of her plants and make sure they don't go moldy or make anything bad airborne pathogens in the air. But the government would have me follow a set of regulations that say I need to not touch her plants and let them rot. This is the kind of ridiculous regulatory regime.
This is the regulatory regime put in by Canada, and uh, and believe me, I have a YouTube channel that I do videos on, and uh, and on that channel, I often talk about. Uh, I talk to other Americans and people overseas and, and they tell me how good we have it here in Canada. And yet I, I, I provide services at a club where I see sick people every day come in who cannot get a license because their doctor refuses to sign. What I say to those people is please get that doctor to put it in writing. If you feel you're qualified and if you follow into the, fall into those regulations, which basically if you have arthritis, you qualify. It's between you and your doctor. Have that doctor write down why he's denying you. Once you show him that waiver form, and all this stuff is downloadable on Health Canada's website, all the forms, and they're also available at the Cannabis Buyers Club, which is located on Johnson Street, just down the road here. And uh, this is important information because that's the only club that I know of here in BC that actually advocates for their members. They actually go to doctors and they actually advocate on their behalf. They provide these applications. Uh, it's one of the reasons I like providing services with them and working with them. Um, they're really frontline fighters in this war, especially on the medical front. And uh, believe me, there's a legalization front to this. Um, and the legalization front, really, we're just a spear. We're a spear in this big war. And this spear has already been justified by the Supreme Court of Canada. You know, we got the U.S. who's basically justified it in I don't know how many states recently. Recently with uh, Massachusetts and Illinois and Hawaii all decriminalizing cannabis statewide. Now, if uh, Mr. Obama decides to come in and say, hey, we're going to legalize cannabis, that might actually help fix some of the economy if some of those brilliant, brilliant policymakers actually put it to work. Back to here in Canada, if we look at our current situation with cannabis and our current situa situation with uh, economics, it doesn't make a lot of uh, take a lot of brainstorming to understand why Canada hasn't further looked into why not just decriminalize something that is harmless. If they have yet to prove anything, who has yet to see a commercial that actually says cannabis is bad or unsafe? The most recent one was a deflating doll, and then what I have to say to a deflating doll is what pill, take a couple Percocet and talk to me in 20 minutes and tell me you don't feel a little freaking lethargic, you know? This is the problem with Health Canada's regime. And they expect us to say that, yeah, they expect me to advocate that, yeah, go get a license. The one thing I can tell you about having a license, and, and this is kind of important, is to understand that the reason that we got these licenses is because you have a right in Canada to your own body. And your own body having a right, uh, you, you have a right to be able to choose your medication with undue state interference. I believe the doctors are state interference because they're held by this no pharmacology crap. And, uh, you know, I believe that that's something that we shouldn't have to keep challenging in court. They've been ruled unconstitutional, challenged and challenged, and yet patients are still unlicensed. And they can't walk around with cannabis um, of their own and carry this and uh, hold it up in the air and know that if there's an officer around, uh, it doesn't really matter. If I wanted to light a joint right now and walk down the street, it's completely legal under the regulations. It's, that's how bizarre they are. You know, I can walk actually down the street with three quarters of a pound. We just didn't think that that would really be appropriate here today. It might draw a little bit of attention. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, just before I close out here, um, I know I've been rambling for a bit, but it's been a pleasure to have you uh, to have you all here because it's, it's like I said, it's a hard moral dilemma to try and advocate for a program that doesn't truly treat people right. Um, on that note. For those who haven't seen, this is what can, uh, Canada has for its medical patients. Currently, there are only 64, as of February 2008, 64 people are ordering from Prairie Plant Systems Incorporated out of 2,434 people who are licensed. What does that tell us about cannabis from Prairie Plant Systems? I can tell you, <laughs> that's right, it does suck. I have, I have done everything they tell me I'm legally not allowed to do under the regulations, such as dry screen it to see if I can make hash. No, because it's been gamma radiated. So I can't make hash. So I tried to screen it, I tried to make oil, and it tells you something about what does, it, really your medicine is a trichome. So really you have to ask yourself, what is it that, that eradication does to this trichome? What is it that does to the medicine? Because they've never actually put any studies out. And as a medical patient, I've been in the Globe and Mail and I've addressed this very issue of why hike up the price. Now $150 an ounce is what I'm sure many of us pay on the street to, uh, to obtain cannabis. But yet the government would have you pay the same amount when you're sick and with no coverage. Zero.
and this is the biggest problem is that there is no coverage um, you know and uh, and this is one of the other fights that we pick up on the forefront um, I have every other medication I want covered and this is one medication